I was looking at the literature, I was writing, uh, writing a chapter for a textbook, and I was looking at the evidence on fibre intake, and what I found was that the, the evidence is totally at odds with what our common beliefs are, uh, conventional wisdom or guidelines, what have you, that fibre is necessary for good gut health and that it's the best and most optimal treatment for constipation is not borne out when we actually look at the literature. If you eat something that is not able to be digested by your body or absorbed in the intestines, then it ends up transiting right down to the distal colon where all the, the bugs that form the microbiome live. And those bacteria will then ferment a, uh, a particular food source and in the process they'll produce gas. So fibre is a non-digestible carbohydrate. So when we eat it, it doesn't get absorbed across our intestines, it transits all the way through, and when it gets fermented by the bacteria, we produce gas and we produce bloating. And there's been an awful amount of literature that has shown that increased levels of fibre intake, you get constipation, you get bloating, and there's only been one experimental study that I could find that looked at the symptoms of constipation and compared high and low fibre diets. Put those patients on varying diets and they range from high fibre diets down to zero fibre diets. So that's no fibre at all. Mm -hmm. And in every single one of the patients on the zero fibre diets, they had complete 100% resolution of all symptoms of their constipation, bleeding, bloating, strain opening the bowels. So it, there were six symptoms and they all completely resolved. And the frequency of bowel actions on the people on the zero fibre diet, and there was 41 people in this group, was exactly one bowel action per day, every day. Now, so we do know that adding fibre will make the faeces bigger, but is that necessarily a good thing? If we think about constipation as having trouble pushing something through a small hole, a sphincter as you will, then adding fibre to bulk out the faeces makes no more sense than adding cars to clear a traffic jam. But we're told about the other benefits of fibre, that it leads to the production of the short chain fatty acids, the butyric acids and these kind of things, and they nourish the cells that line our colon. And that is absolutely true. You do produce those and they get absorbed. These short chain fatty acids get absorbed by the cells that line the colon. But here's the thing. They then get converted to ketones. And the ketones then provide sufficient energy for these cells that line our colon to produce a, a healthier mucus layer and other things. So in effect, the state of nutritional ketosis, somebody on a ketogenic diet is gonna be getting all the benefits of these ketones and not only that they get it without the side effects of bloating and rather than being uh, only applied to some of the cells lining our colon in a, in a small area where they're produced these ketones when you're in systemic ketosis can be supplied to all the cells lining the intestine right from the mouth right through to the anal sphincter so But as a scientist, I really have to conclude that, uh, uh, that fiber is not an essential part of the diet. We have lots of people with inflammatory bowel disease mm. who when they reduce the fiber in their diet, they get huge symptomatic improvement. So it's also supported by the literature. It's just unfortunately, the literature hasn't translated into guidelines.